Hey hey, Marcus House with you here, and we're going to be learning today about delta v, what delta v actually means, and how to calculate delta v manually. And remember, we're using a stock install here. So we're just going to have a look first of all at our target engine here of choice. Now our target engine here, our Terrier engine, has an ISP of 345 in a vacuum, and we're going to conduct our tests in the vacuum of space. We're actually going to use the same engine for both of our stages here just to simplify our calculations. Now we need to know the full weight of our craft versus the empty weight. So you can see here we've got 3.1 tonnes as our second stage. Now we're going to empty our liquid fuel and our oxidizer and we're going to see what the difference is. So you can see there we've got a weight of 2.1 when we're empty. So it's 3.1 versus 2.1. We want to do the exact same process again with the first stage, our, our first stage is going to fire. So we can see here that the empty mass is 5.9 uh, and we want to essentially see what it's going to be when it's empty. So we're going to re again remove the liquid fuel and oxidizer out and we end up with a mass of 3.9. It is very important that you make sure that the other stages, the later stages in the rocket are filled. Uh, filled full before you take your weight measurements otherwise all your calculations are going to be off. So we've launched our rocket with booster stages. The, all, both of these stages are still now full and you'll notice here we've put ourselves on a very elliptical orbit around Kerbin. Uh, very very elliptical and the reason for that is so that we've only got a very very low speed. We're only moving at about 143 meters per second in the slowest part of this orbit so it's nice and stable. So, lesson time. Delta V is the potential velocity that you can gain based off the engines and the fuel that you have available to you in your stages. So we need, to, to calculate our delta V, we need the ISP of our engine, we need our gravity constant there, and we need our full mass versus our empty mass, and we need to do this for each stage. Now, LN is the natural logarithm. You can actually use the LN key, uh, the LN button in your scientific calculator. This is just a Windows calculator, but any calculator should have a natural logarithm function, which is quite easy to use. Now again, we need to have a look at that ISP of our engine. So the ISP is 345 in this case for these for, for both of these stages. We're using the same engine just to keep this a little simpler. Again though, you can rinse and repeat this for any type of engine you've got. Our G variable here is a static variable, which is 9.807. Now this is the acceleration due to gravity at Earth's surface, and this is really used to calculate the ISPs of an engine uh, in Kerbal Space Program, so you'll actually find that this value doesn't change at all in any of your calculations, it's always the static 9.807. What we're going to do here is we need to work out the natural logarithm for each stage. So we take our full mass and our empty mass and we divide those together. So in our first stage that was 5.9 divided by 3.9 and this gives us a value of 1.5128 with a heap more decimal places. We then run our LN function on top of that which gives us 0.414. Doing the same thing with our second stage we've got our full mass of 3.1 divided by our empty mass of 2.1 and then we calculate that which is 1.4761 and more decimal places. So we run our LN function on that and that gives us 0 0.389 and more decimal places. You can be as accurate there as you want but for uh, simplicity we've, uh, we've rounded these a, a little. So to calculate our delta V we actually multiply these numbers together. 345 by 9.807 by 0 0.414 gives us 1,401 meters per second. And the delta V for our stage two is simply 345 by 9.807 by 0 0.389. And this gives us 1,316 meters per second for our second stage. Of course, the total delta V is simply these two numbers added together. The stage one delta V plus the stage two delta V. So 1,401 plus 1,316 gives us 2,717 metres per second total. Keep in mind that our craft up in orbit is already doing around 143 metres per second. So for our stage one, we need to add our 1,401 metres per second on top of that, giving us around 1,544 metres per second. 
Now for our stage 2, we would again add on another 1316 meters per second. So the end velocity after stage 2 firing should be around the 2860 meter mark. So we're going to fire off here and see how we go. So again, starting off at 140 meters per second in our very elliptical orbit of Kerbin. Now we're just going to fire this engine and run out. We're actually going to time warp uh, and, and time accelerate here. So again, the velocity we should end up with after firing this first stage is around the 1540 mark. Fourteen hundred, fifteen hundred, and that's about it there. So we're already up to our fifteen thirty-nine meters per second from our first stage. Now that's only a few meters per second less than uh, than our prediction, so that's great. We'll just disconnect our first stage and decouple there, and firing our second stage. Now this is going to be a much shorter stage, but we've got a lot less mass to push forward. So this is why we're able to get a similar sort of delta V out of the second stage with only half the fuel. Again, time accelerating there. And our final delta V being 2850 meters per second. So this is, this is exactly the result we would expect based on our delta V calculations. Of course, you've got orbits changing slowly over time. You've got slight uh, rounding issues and things like that, but uh, we were within 10 meters per second there, so that's great. So there you have it, calculating delta V manually. Now of course there's a lot of mods out there that do this sort of thing. MechJeb is the obvious one that everyone uses to do these sorts of calculations, but I find that the the science behind the game, the main benefits of the game, can sometimes be much more beneficial just really having a deep understanding of how these calculations work. And this is quite close to how things are calculated in real life with uh, with rocket efficiency. Of course, when you're not in a complete vacuum, you're also fighting things like atmospheric drag and all those sorts of uh, external factors. But for the most part in, uh, in Kerbal Space Program, you are generally jumping around space and trying to figure out how much fuel you need to get here or there, or how much fuel your landing stage needs to have around a certain body like the Mun or Minimus. So I hope you found all that useful. Please subscribe for more and we'll see you in the next video.